Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. I had a request for an oven mitt, so that's what I'm making today. First of all, I bought some Insel Bright from my local Joann's store and what do you know, there on the packaging was a pattern for an oven mitt. So it was perfect timing, somebody asked and there was a pattern. The first thing I had to do was copy the pattern and make it 150%. I did try drawing my own and I was kind of curious how big my hand-drawn oven mitt was compared to the one that is on the packaging. So as you can see, when I copied, my paper of course wasn't big enough so I had to do some different pieces of that pattern and then I had to tape them together after I had enlarged the pattern to 150%. pattern is a lot bigger than I had expected. So here is my hand-drawn pattern that I had tried to draw earlier in the week and I thought that would be plenty big. So I'm going to go with the pattern that comes on the packaging and I'll see how it goes. So I'm going to cut my, um, my hand-drawn pattern out just to compare the size. had this beautiful fabric left over from I think it's been a couple of years ago when I used these strips of fabric on some kitchen towels. If I still have the video uh, on my channel I will leave the link below. I cut these fabrics into strips. I sewed them together and then I cut I think it was a two or three inch strip and I added it to some kitchen towels for some gifts. So I'm using my pattern on my pretty fabric here and then I cut a piece of that insole bright and it also requires a piece of batting so I have three layers here for the front side of my oven mitt. So this is just the front side of my oven mitt and I sat down and I started quilting those three layers together using my all-purpose foot on my Juki and after a couple of lines using my all-purpose foot I decided I would use my walking foot. This um, three layers of fabric and batting and insole bright is quite thick and I thought my walking foot might do a better job and it turns out it did do a better job. This foot worked okay but I think in hindsight I probably should have started with that walking foot.
after quilting some lines that were parallel with these seams, I added some lines that, were, that went the opposite direction. And as you can see here, I did not mark. I um, didn't want to spend the time marking this oven mitt. I just didn't think that it would be that noticeable if the lines are not exactly um, spaced, you know, exactly the same. So I'm just adding lines going this way and that, and then I will make the back of my oven mitt. So again, I'm using some leftover fabric. I added one seam to these two fabrics to make my piece lar large enough. I added that insel bright, and then I added a piece of batting and now I'll quilt this um, fabric as well. When cutting out your oven mitt, this pattern needs to be turned upside down for the back side. So you need to make sure that one side is right side up and the other side is right side down. And after I had this pinned down on the right side of my fabric or on the right side of my oven mitt, I realized that this would be my left hand and I am right-handed. So I took the pins out and I turned this pattern upside down so that the front of my oven mitt will be for a right-handed person. And after I did the front, I'm going to make the back of my oven mitt. And of course, both sides are pretty, but in my mind, these all these strips are the front side. 
So now I'm going to cut the back and then we'll put these pieces together. I want to mention that the directions on this Insole Bright have you put the wrong sides together and it instructs you to add seam binding or bias binding all the way around the outside on the right side. And I did not want to add that bias binding around the edges. I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to put right sides together. I'll pin the two pieces together and then I'm going to sew them together with right sides together and see what happens. This is very bulky and I did wonder how it would work out but um, this is what I did and let you know ahead of time it did work out just fine and again I used my walking foot to sew around the outside of this oven mitt. took my scissors and cut as close as I could to that seam in the corner so that when I turn this right side out it won't be bunched up hopefully in that um, that little corner there so now I'm going to turn this right side out and we're going to see how we did I think it turned out great. I thought with all those layers this would be way too bulky, but it isn't. I think it's just right. And the size is perfect. I'm glad that I didn't try to draw my own pattern. <laughs> and now for the edge of that oven mitt, I have this double fold bias tape and I'm going to be adding it to the inside of the oven mitt and then I'll fold it to the outside and top stitch all the way around. I started sewing I folded that edge at an angle there so that when I come around and finish up I will add the end of the strip sort of over that fold and when I wrap it around to the front side I won't have any raw edges showing.
I added some yellow thread so that it would match this bias binding that I'm adding to the top. And when I'm done with that, this oven mitt will be all ready to go. Well, I love this project. I'm so glad that someone asked me how to make one of these because I um, enjo really enjoyed making it and I had fun using those leftover fabric pieces from a couple years ago and even the back is pretty. I love this. I don't know who I'm going to give it to, but I'm going to have fun dreaming about who's going to enjoy this gift. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.